Throughout history, few were given the power to control the destiny of their fellow man. The tribal chief was a powerful shape. Information, the first principle of warfare, must form the foundation of all your efforts. Know, of course, thine enemy, but in knowing him, do not forget, above all, to know thyself. The commander who embraces this totality of battle shall win, even with the inferior force. If I determine the enemy's disposition of forces while I have no perceptible form, I can concentrate my forces while the enemy is fragmented. The pinnacle of military deployment approaches the formless. If it is formless, then even the deepest spy cannot discern it, or the wise make plans against it. the future be different. exist to be consumed, and consumed they will be, if not by this generation, then by some future. By what right does this forgotten future seek to deny us our birthright? None, I say. Let us take what's ours. First trial of victory, for it combines mobility flexibility and initiative. Superior training and superior weaponry have, taken together, a geometric effect on overall military strength. War is war. Destruction is destruction. You think this is obvious, but war is not destruction. It is victory.
shall take only the greatest minds, the finest soldiers, the most faithful servants. We shall multiply them a thousandfold and release them to usher in a new era of glory. Just doing a once over before we start the campaign. So villagers get 15% or get 15 more health. Uh, stone throwers, catapults, heavy cats fire 45% faster. So we'll have a lot faster on the siege. Not that I really focus too much on the catapults, but we do get centurions. So we get catapults, we get heavy horse archers, centurions, uh, scythian chariots, which uh, upgrade cost is pretty high at a thousand gold. But from there on, they only cost food and wood, and not too much either. The Centurions, uh. Not gonna be as nearly as good as, like, Greece or Macedon. Because we only get Bronze Shield, and we only get Metalworking. So they're not super great at attacking, and not super great against, uh, towers and stuff. Which, speaking of towers, we do get all the way up to Ballista, and, uh, Fortified Walls. We get quite a bit on the market, except for craftsmanship, so we're not going to have super strong archers. But we do get ballistics and alchemy, which will help uh, ease that gap a little bit. And we do have ships all the way up to Tri-Ring. We don't get any catapults. We do get fire galleys, though. Hopefully I don't have to do too much uh, naval combat. It's like the one thing I don't really like doing in most games is naval combat. I can kind of do it in some games, like uh, in Age of Empires, I can kind of do a little bit of micro, at least against the AI, but it's not something I particularly like doing. But we'll do it if it's becoming increasingly uh, annoying, especially in draining resources and the like, so we don't get any Ballista, we don't get any improved or composite bowmen, which uh, I think are mostly good for maybe like defense and that's about it I really don't like using them for offense I'd rather I would rather use uh, cavalry archers or chariot archers and we only get up to long swordsmen which I mean it's not bad we don't get uh, legionary but to be fair we also don't get uh, fanaticism so that was gonna be off the table uh, by default anyway our priests are okay. We don't get monotheism, which is a bit more helpful because you can convert buildings and you can also convert enemy priests. We do get the uh, theocracy. And I don't see too much else that we need to concern ourselves with. Centurion, Sith, uh, Scythian chariots, uh, war elephants, I suppose. But as you can see, the war elephants don't get a whole lot of... Uh, armor especially against like archers and stuff or at least our uh, centurions will have armor of eight and armor of seven and we do get uh, even more armor so this is plus two plus two plus two and then bronze shield will only give us one against uh, arrows Okay, I'm just going to click on this just so I can see. Okay, so that was five missions. This one was also five missions. So, by all reason, this should also be five missions. Uh, some of the missions might be longer. Some of the missions might be shorter. I'm not really entirely sure. And if even if we finish the campaign early, I will probably do a skirmish, depending on how, much, on how fast we get through it. Uh, might be a skirmish here. Basically, Age of Empires being played on Age of Empires 2 with some uh, convenience items like gates which are actually quite helpful because otherwise you'd have, you, you had to leave a gap open 
and then just like keep throwing like uh, centurions or whatever in there to uh, block the enemy until you get enough force to break through when you're playing against uh, AI the way I do, which is on Nomad, which we can only do on I think like two maps, and you have to choose it as a map type. Anyway, we are the chosen one. The ways of the gods are incomprehensible. Far more predictable is the path walked by a man who considers himself a god. So too it was for Sargon, the greatest conqueror Mesopotamia has ever known. Like the legendary shepherd that founded our great city, Sargon seemed to have descended from heaven a grown man, crafted by the gods to rule the world. But while his true origins remain a mystery, his earthly story began here, in Kish, a place so beautiful that even the lustrous words of the poets cannot do it justice. Back when I, Ushar, was still a man of youthful strength, Kish was ruled by Urzababa. If the gods had molded Sargon from clouds and ether, Urzababa was made from common clay. Nothing about him was exceptional. Save for his fondness for fine food, extravagant clothes, and luxurious wine. Urzababa had appointed Sargon as his cupbearer, and the shy, unassuming adolescent served him wine and kept him company in many a lonely hour. Yet, unbeknownst to the king, Sargon was plagued by a strange, recurring dream. Ishtar, the goddess of war, appeared to Sargon in his sleep and promised him extraordinary things. One day, she said, he would be king not only of Kish, but of all the land between the Euphrates and the Tigris. Not realizing the weight of his words, Sargon told his master of the dream, and the king turned pale. Had the boy who served him every day truly been chosen by the goddess of war, Urzababa could not allow this prophecy to come true. He banished Sargon to the desert, and in doing so, he convinced Sargon that the goddess had spoken truly. Yet banishment was not enough for the frightened king. He soon sent Kish's most vigorous warriors to ambush his former confidant among the dunes. I was one of those men. As a smith, I was the strongest. And when Urzababa ordered me to swap my hammer for a sword, I accepted, but not without hesitation. By now, the tale of the banished servant and his dreams had spread far beyond the royal palace. Many who suffered under Urzababa's rule saw Sargon as a savior. When I finally caught up with him at a remote well, he was resting in the shade. I left my sword in its scabbard and faced a man who showed no fear. In his mind, he was no longer a simple servant. He was indeed Ishtar's chosen one. I mean, poor decisions on both parties, but sure. As Sargon, we will take every opportunity to exploit and conquer. Yeah, so let me tell my master that I have dreams of grandeur and uh, conquest, especially of his city. <laughs> Sargon and Usher must survive. Sargon is restricted to the Bronze Age and a population limit of 75, so you do not have the means to build docks yet. Sumerian villagers ha have high hit points, which makes them more resistant to wild animals and early enemy rushes. Their fertile farms also yield more food than those of other civilizations. <clears throat> Priesthoods loyal to Urzababa lead the city-states of Sippar and Borshipa. Destroying their temples and building your own uh, where they once stood will convince the cities to join your cause instead. Do not hesitate to use Sargon in battle once you have obtained a base. Should he be wounded, he will retreat to your temple and return to the fight after he has recovered. So are you telling me that he will leave on his own, or... 
I have to do that. Anyway, after being uh, banished from Quiche, Sargon in blue has reached the spring where he can quench his thirst for days of wandering. Another wanderer has arrived. Is he a friend or an enemy? Urzababa is not satisfied with Sargon's exile. I mean... That was his fault, but whatever. Some of the king's infantry and archers are roaming the area, probably tasked with assassinating Sargon. Urzababa himself, in red, dwells in the capital of Kish, guarded by a strong force of priests and chariots. To overthrow Urzababa, Sargon must storm Kish, which is in yellow, uh, which is defended by infantry, archers, and catapults. Sapar and Borshipa, both green and purple, are cities ruled by priests loyal to Urzababa. Sapar's army consists of archers and catapults, and Borshipa primarily uses short swordsmen and axemen. So one is going to be a bit more annoying, so i got to focus on the catapults and then lay waste to the archers later. And we are going to be stuck in the Bronze Age. So, uh... I guess just tons of chariot archers, some chariots, and maybe some infantry. We don't get cavalry, but we do get, uh, camels. But since none of them are really using, uh, cavalry units, really. Hmm. Probably should get a couple of catapults for on if we can. Urzababa has sent assassins to kill me? How would you know that if you are not one of them yourself? You are perceptive, Sargon. I understand why Urzababa fears you so much, but there is no time to talk. Let me prove my loyalty to you. There is the traitor called Sargon. What are you waiting for, Shah? Help us hunt down the enemy. Raza Baba will send more assassins. We cannot stay here. But I know of two villages where we could hide for a while. Oh, this one has walls. Probably should have went for the other one. Oh well. It is Sargon, the Chosen One, who it is said will lead us Sumerians into a new age. You may stay with us as long as you wish, and we will support your cause. Alamar. Umbis, Ibertare. Abedan Thomas. We'll just stick to the one base for now. Oh, well, that's nice. He heals himself. Maybe exploring wasn't the brightest idea. on the heavily guarded southern gates of Kish will cost many lives. Our scouts report that the gates to the north are barely protected, however. Hmm. So, you are holed up in a CD village, Zargon. My scouts are everywhere. You can escape neither my eyes nor your fate. It's not too much point going for infantry armor, I don't think. At least while we're in bronze. Do not hesitate to send your merchants to us to trade. Uh, 
Habe Dank. Habe Dank. Habe Dank. Rock. Soms. I'll just keep those guys here. Since we need to keep them both alive. Baba rules not only Kish, but also Zippar and Borsippa. It is time that these places bow to Ishtar's will. Well, uh, considering that everyone else is in bronze, we need to get there before we can do any attacks, I think. Now I just have an overwhelming amount of archers. <laughs> That's probably not going to happen. Great now, so we can get full use of farms. Urza Baba's forces have occupied several mines in this area. We should seize them. Several of there, I guess. So I don't know if they have to worry about yellow themselves actually attacking. Or rather, the red that's stationed inside the yellow. Um, 
Anubis. Anubis. Skip so far. Search the wheel, which will cost us 175. Should have it by then. Okay, and then we got two outposts. We should target that one first, just so we don't have to worry about any backline. Sells as garrison. Camel actually offer anything. Because that should affect our heroes. Oh. 
I don't want to grab the farmer. <laughs> Friendly splash damage on buildings, though. Doing what you're doing.
zombies. Way up, way up. Oh. Don't know what I can't need. Borsipa's temple was smoking ruins. Build a new place of worship here so that the people can henceforth dedicate their lives to Ishtar. Worship Nabu, the god of learning and writing. From now on, they will revere the power of the sword with which we will smash Urzababa's weak rule. Okay. Kill Urzababa, who is. That's him? Alright, be a bit of annoying. Uh, does he have ballistic towers? I can't tell. They are at least fortified.
They're not going to take orders from me, are they? No. But they will pay as tribute. Upgrades all we can. That. Just for comfort, I suppose. On the off chance we need to actually replace a bunch of our units. Converted, I guess. Or maybe it's because I'm already above cop, which I don't think was an issue before, but whatever. Oklahoma, <laughs> Zippar were once blinded by the sun god, but they have now seen the light. <laughs> it wasn't Their too late for that villager. Oh, Ishtar's poor guy. <laughs> but the war's over! Uh, sorry? <laughs>
Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and plant this, like... Sacrilege to tear down the temples of pious men, Zargon. Is this your no. idea of a new order? You are building on quicksand, my friend. Get away from my land, Zargon. Remember that I exiled you from here. You can only make such demands if you have the power to do so. And I how and I hold the power now. Is Green actually going to go on the attack? <laughs> Maybe I don't have to do nothing. Government center. Can they still build town centers? I don't think so.
kill me, just as the prophecy foretold. I converted him. <laughs> He's dead. Oh, no, I guess not. Oh, heroes cannot be converted anymore. They got rid of the being able to convert to heroes. I don't like it. Upon my lips, all is lost. As I say, <laughs> that's taking so long. He's dead. Let's move on. As we entered the royal palace in Kish. I swelled with joy and pride. <clears throat> Sargon had triumphed, and it seemed that this man, blessed by Ishtar, was truly invincible. Yet in my quiet moments, I wondered if it would ever have come to this if Urzababa had not expelled Sargon. Had we fulfilled a prophecy, or had a simple dream become prophecy? Only after the fearful king sealed his own fate. Dreams and oracles, visions and prophecies, it seems that these mysterious forces can be as dangerous to those who believe in them as they are to those who ignore them. <clears throat> ah, just getting a bit stiff. I got like one spot. Been trying to pop like all day and it hasn't yet. 263 kill, lost 57, that's fine. Uh, lost two buildings, six converted, 86 raised. What two buildings did we lose? Hmm. Oh well. And. He yeah, had largest army at 169. Our soldiers often wondered where Sargon had actually come from. Some believed that he had descended from heaven like the founder of Kish. Others said that he was an orphan who had been found in a basket floating on the Euphrates. I have even heard some townsmen say that he was the son of a priestess who had given birth without having ever lain with a man. Sargon only smiled at these rumors. He said that it does not matter where a man comes from, only where he goes, and that he himself follows the path that Ishtar shows him. That path led to war. With Kish subdued, Sargon sent his army to conquer the countless city-states of Mesopotamia in Ishtar's name. The masters of these cities scoffed at Sargon's ambitions, yet secretly, they all feared him. In order to match Sargon's army, they joined forces under the leadership of Lugal Zagisi, the priest killer. He was a brutal man, feared for his atrocities across the region. He would often desecrate the temples of the cities that he conquered. Yet, he was a capable tactician and a gifted commander. A suitable challenge for Ishtar's champion. Okay. So how many enemies must we subdue or conquer? Bring the artifact to the flagged area in Nippur. Susa... Isin and Larsa. Sargon is restricted to the Bronze Age and the population limit of 75. You do not 
Have to wipe out the opposing city-states, bringing your sacred artifact to each of them will be enough to convince them to defeat or to defect from uh, Lugal Zagisi. In order to present the artifact to each city-state, you must expel Lugal Zagisi's garrison in orange from each respective plaza, marked by flags. You can turn the small settlements dotting the map into tributaries by building markets in each one. Guard tributary villager, or villages with additional soldiers or towers to avoid losing your markets to enemy attacks. Take good care of your artifact. If it is captured, you will not have much time to take it back. Do not hesitate to use Sargon in battle. Should he be wounded, he will retreat to your temple and return to the fight after he's recovered. Alright, so I take it that Sargon is just specifically like he can't die. He just stops fighting and like leaves. <laughs> okay. Having disposed of Ur Zabasa, Sargon now rules Kish and has set his sights on the city-states that allied with Lugal Zagisi. In the east, Susa is weakly defended by archery units and could fall to an early assault. To the south, Nippur is guarded by a much stronger force that is also using siege engines. To the southwest, Eason is similarly strong, but its impulsive leader engages in ill-advised and futile attacks. In the far south, Larsa is the enemy's alliance's strongest city-state. Its priests will lead its defense and are difficult to defeat. Himself has only attacked a few men with patrolling the region's roads and guarding some of the cities, but spies report that he is missing a large army in his capital, or is massing a large army in the, his capital to deal with Sargon. Okay, Nippur, Susa, Isin, and Larsa. Versus red, green, and uh, purple. The city states of Mesopotamia lie before us. They are loyal to Lugal Zagisi, but they will follow Ishtar's call after seeing her artifact. This is the guard carrying the artifact. We should task soldiers to guard it at all times so that the artifact does not fall into the wrong hands. Our scouts report seeing some unclaimed villages in this area. We shall add them to my growing empire. Well, we are going to need a bit more stone, a bit faster than normal. And I just got to build a market there, I guess. Alright, so which one was the uh, archer? Time that we start in bronze. Go to get the upgrade. Bombus. Just so we don't got a load of defense over here.
Bombers. Constructed a market in this village. As long as it remains standing, the inhabitants will pay tribute to us. Alright, so that's one garrison that's down.
Was your priest worth the cattle? And the answer is probably not. Inhabitants of Shusha realize that their resistance is futile, for mortals cannot defy the divine will. They will join our cause. Should we go for purple? They're doing lots of camels. Do some yeah, camels as well. Who do you think you are, Sargon? A holy man? As far as I know, you have only pushed the senile old man from his throne. Do not make the mistake of considering me such a pathetic figure. Oh, and before I forget, I hear that you are spreading rumors among your followers that I am a cruel desecrator of them. What exactly did you do in Sipar and Torsen? You're a hip? Hop lights just for safety. Eyes up. Alright. So, I say we attack from this way. So I think it'd be prudent to go for purple, just so we got them out of the way and not have to worry about attacks from them. We got some orange here. Go to mark it down there. Go to mark it there. 
kinds of stuff. tower. Kill those orange units there. Move on. People of Nippur are in awe of our army and Ishtar's artifact. This city will not cause us any further. That's probably going to be like the most annoying one. Oh, I never liked that city anyway. Untrustworthy wretches who always pay their taxes late. You are welcome to deal with them from now on. Sure. Oklahoma, Oklahoma, Sure. I'll just have this army oh. up over here. I can. Sure, my where uh, my so-called hero is. <laughs> where are you, Sargon? I don't even know where you are. Hey, 
Oh, okay. He's in a chariot now. So I was using him. Okay. Okay, we're gonna make you number four now. Oops, you guys need to be number four. Number six, support. Number two. And the main force is number one. You know what, I should probably scout this. Right? Make sure it's not like an orange floating around. I don't think there was any orange over here. I think they like all pulled out because I was building a market. We have constructed a market in this village. As long as it remains standing, the inhabitants will pay tribute to us. On this. Then we'll just build down there, I guess. Why not? You are not to attack unless I give you specific orders to do so. We're just gonna get everyone kind of healed up a little bit. I mean, they have a few towers, I suppose, but. in this village. As long as it remains standing, the inhabitants will pay tribute to us. The soldiers of Isin bow to Ishtar's will and will no longer fight us. From now on, our enemies are theirs. Fantastic. Right. Three enemies defeated. Alamash. Only one city-state left. Alamash. In the name of the goddess of war, we will conquer even the most stubborn. What are you waiting for, my soldiers? Victory is within reach. Not so fast, Sargon. You might impress some frightened city militias with your cheap artifact, but not me. Prepare to fight real soldiers! Thank <laughs> you. 
Let us see if that self-proclaimed chosen one is immune to our swords and arrows. Charge! Well, well. We will soon find out which of us bit off more than he could chew, Lugal Zagisi. residents. Common farmers and rich merchants alike are equally seized by fear and awe. They bow their heads to the goddess and to you, wise Sarko. Now we're at least the people swarm on. We're going for chariot archers because their strength of troops is so many, so we're not more strength. You had that entire time to deal damage to it, and this is all you've accomplished. Just a taste, Zargon. Next time I will not be so merciful, but will crush you like a bothersome insect. There they run. Back to Uruk to lick their wounds. The day is ours. 
Whatever happened to my villager? Did he die? Maybe he died. After several bloody campaigns, the enemy like, I could have swore I was had one ordered to build a market. The goddess of war may have enjoyed the slaughter, yet I shudder at the piles of bodies that we left behind in her name. Still, our mission was not over. Ishtar had promised Sargon all of the land that lies between the two great rivers. But as long as Lugal Sagisi remained at large, Sargon's claim to hegemony would be challenged. As the tyrant fled southwards, our soldiers pursued him to his well-fortified capital of Uruk. There, holed up behind its walls, he began scheming once more. All right, 220 killed, 98 lost, mostly just from that defense. Once, as Lugal Zagisi was burning down a temple, a dying priest uttered with his last ragged breath, the blood of the innocent will be paid for by the blood of the one. Not one to ignore a second prophecy. Sargon took the priest's words to heart the reports of them reached his ears. They became a mantra that our soldiers echoed as we marched on Uruk. We knew that Ishtar would guide our way and grant us victory once more. Alright, do we get to go to the Iron Age? Or is that t not until later? <laughs> if ever. Kill the girl Zagishi. Sargon can support a population of 75 and may advance to the Iron Age. Huzzah! You do not need to destroy the enemy capital of Uruk. Killing Lagal Zagashi is enough. Uruk is a heavily fortified and well-defended city. Scout the surrounding countryside for outlying targets that you can destroy to weaken Uruk's defenses. Do not hesitate to use Sargon in battle. Should he be wounded, he will retreat to your temple and be returned to fight after he is recovered. Your allies from the recent acquisition of Islin are reliable, but need guidance on how to serve you properly. See the objective tabs for detailed instructions. Uh, enemy elephants are deadlier, are deadly to soldiers, but quickly succumb to the whisperings of priests. No, oh, can I get some more? No. Your scouts report that after conquering Larsa, Sargon's army, Blue, has assembled to take the fight to Lagal Zagashi. Zageshi's ancient capital of Uruk lies in the west, heavily guarded by camel riders, slingers, and swordsmen. Slingers aren't really that much of a consequence, except for, like, archers. And even then, uh, one slinger I don't think does enough damage to win in a one-on-one -on -one fight against a uh, chariot archer. I could be wrong, but it's not usually something I see too often, so it's hard for me to save uh, definitively. But... Uh, Legeshi in orange hides deep inside Uruk, defended by his bodyguard of hoplites and composite bowmen. He has also set up defensive camps, red, outside of Uruk, for his vanguard of horse archers. Rumors tell of nearby farming villages that supply Uruk with food, and letting these will be crucial. Sargon's new allies from the city of Islin have brought an army of camel riders, chariots, and catapults to support him. South of Uruk lies Ur, purple. Another city loyal to Lagal Zageshi. Ur will mainly train elephant archers and war elephants, but its ambition masons or ambitious masons could be even more dangerous than its powerful army. It is time to end Lugal Zagisi's reign of terror and unite Mesopotamia. Uruk shall belong to a rightful king, not a corrupt desecrator of temples. Arai, bombes. Yuri, evil party. Actually, I'm just happy you cut that blue, I guess. Bombes. Right there. Bombes. 
Chariot maker that supplies Lugal Zagisi's army. Burn it all down. We shall get. Oh, actually, we already have one. Fantastic. Theory. here and there. I don't see a granary anywhere though. Uh, I don't think a granary too bad. But uh, being able to upgrade the towers would probably be nice to have. And since we can get to iron, we'll probably do that as soon as possible. Archers, so that's good. Logan, Thomas, Tarai, Thomas. Yuri, Thomas. Rogan, Thomas. Alright, that should take care of that. Okay. 
them up. Alam mo, keyboard hide. We have spotted some outlying farms that provide food for our enemies. What shall we do, Sargon? Burn them down. are gone. Tell us where to strike and we will send forth our army. As you wish. Our soldiers are on their way. out is we just turn those against Masters of Ur want to humiliate us with the construction of a monument. Apparently, we did not make it clear enough that we are at war. Okay, so where's this wonder? Somewhere in here, maybe? Yeah. 
Alle Maas. I guess we'll just put him on woodcutting for now. And we probably shouldn't have to worry about that. Okay, do we have enough range now? Enemy stables are in ruins. Lugal Zagisi will have to do without chariots from now on. As you wish, our soldiers are on their way.
Your wonder means nothing. Watch it crumble in despair. can get wood. Time to leave, boys. Time to leave. Thankfully, we can trade markets. Otherwise, uh, there's no way I'd be getting the Scythian. going while we wait, since we're almost there. As you wish, our soldiers are on their way.
for a little bit. And we're good. Yuri. Bombay. No, we can go all the way up to the Centurion if we so choose. sell food or something. Oh. Okay. So they changed that. Four, you had to uh, tell it what resource you wanted to trade for gold. Wood, stone, or food. I usually chose food because 75 wood and you get like 300, 500 food. Or farm or something like that. Subjective. Well, let's see, were they foolish enough to leave their army? I mean, red's kind of here, but red's kind of uh, are dead. Here, like, we got like one more, right? Oh, If you so choose, probably don't need it at this point. I mean, Centurions are nice, don't be wrong. Uh, I'm not going to say this thing from this. going to get plus two to projectile. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. 
35 plus 7 plus 7. Inhabitants will have no food for years. Is this really necessary? It was the divine will. Never question that again, soldier. It is not for you to query Ishtar's intentions. You fools! We're in! Oh, oh, oh. 
soldiers are on their way. Soldiers, do you want to die needlessly, Zaga? Is this bloodshed part of your divine purpose? We captured Lugal Zagisi. We did not kill him right away. Forcing him into a yoke like a common criminal, we paraded him all across Sargon's new kingdom. We took him as far as Lagash, within whose ruins the dying priest had pronounced his prophecy. The evil defiler looked old and frail as he knelt in the temple ruins for his execution. <laughs> his death ended the age of kings that had guided the fortunes of Mesopotamia for centuries. Now it was up to Sargon to shape his new empire, and it soon became apparent that he had ambitious plans. Plans that chilled my blood. Kill 224, lost 101. I mean, the farmers were literally just nine, so. Despite not having been groomed for rule, Sargon had a natural talent for kingship. He built his new capital of Akkad <clears throat> to the north of Sumer, sending his new subordinates a powerful message. He would not follow the traditions established by past kings. No. This was truly a new beginning. An enormous court soon surrounded Sargon. More than a thousand servants, priests, scholars, and soldiers populated the king's palace. And they all had to be fed and paid. Sargon therefore turned his sights on neighboring kingdoms. Once, dominion of Mesopotamia had been the sum of his ambitions. But Sargon had changed. The larger his entourage grew, the more he pushed his old companions away. And the greater the riches he amassed, the greedier the flickering in his eyes seemed to me. He hardly spoke of the goddess of war anymore. He no longer visited her temples, nor offered her sacrifices. It seemed that as his power grew, Sargon forgot to whom he owed his throne. And now, as he rallied his armies to conquer the kingdom of Elam, he tempted her wrath. Well, we still have like one more mission after this, I think. Defeat Elam. Neither Akkad nor the Hurrians may be defeated. Sargon can support a population 75 and may advance to the Iron Age to start again in the bronze. You have hardly any villagers and cannot train anymore, but Sargon's new capital of Akkad will provide him with laborers on a regular basis. The Hurrians, on the other hand, will provide you with resources but need military support against uh, Elamite counterattacks. 
the hotly contested rich uh, fish rich <laughs> fish rich uh, Persian Gulf could be an excellent source of additional food income, but you must defend your fishing boats from the enemy navy. Sargon's powerful army has gathered in the south on the coast of the Persian Gulf. It is prepared to attack Elam, but lacks villagers. Sargon's new capital of Akkad will supply your army with villagers, but must be protected with enemy ra uh, from enemy raids. The allied Hurrians are militarily weak, but the regular shipments of wood, stone, and food with which they provide your pearl forces will, pro will prove crucial. Elam, yellow, lies to the east, defended by a powerful army of chariot archers and heavy cavalry. It is also it also has a sizable navy of uh, fire galleys and triremes prowling the shores. The coastal town of, or coastal town of Nima, or Nina, suffers grievously at the hands of the Elamite pirates. Only after Elam's fleet is eliminated can Nina become a significant ally. So we might push into uh, naval combat first to get them as an ally just so we have even more resources or perhaps a party that can give a bit more attack to them. But before I start, let's go ahead and take a quick bow break and I will be back in just a bit. Elam and our allies cannot be defeated. Got it. Since we're gonna have so few to begin with, uh, we, do that. we will send the laborers that you need, but you must keep the Elamite soldiers away from our walls. Elare. Alamas. Yuri. Bombus. And I can't train anymore. Hey, 
but dad, that would be the next one's. Elamite soldiers are Alamas. in our city. Alamas. Bombus. Eba Dada. Yui. Alamas. Samus. Yui. Bombus. Bahirians are all the way over here. Well, at least I can start off with already upgraded guard towers. I just want to know what the most direct route is to them. Here are the promised tributes, Sargon. We hope that everything is to your satisfaction. That is enough for now. But continue to deliver resources diligently. Otherwise, I will have to conscript you into military service. And that is not something that you want, correct? will work for you, Sargon. Alamas. Alamas. Bombus. among us. Send soldiers to help us, your highness. These villagers will work for you, Sargon. Alamas. 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 Under. 
Palamas. 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 Maybe we'll be lucky enough with this gun not to. Oh, Hello, right? Um. Just will work for you, Sargon. Oh, well, that works out. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. Well, if I can knock those out and just destroy whatever they happen to have. Okay, ma. I have gathered more resources for you, Sarkulare. Alamas. Bombus. are plundering our lands. Help us, Sargon. Please do not be angry with us, but we cannot support you properly as long as Elamite warships attack our trade boats. These villagers will work for you, Sargon. Why, Sargon? Tell us which resources you require, and we will gather what you need most. Hmm. Well, that's a good question. Uh, you know what? Give me stone. Give me some stone. You plan to construct more towers and walls? Very well. We will provide you with stone. Do not shy away from taking what you need, soldiers. 
plunder the enemy's homes as you please. None of you will face any consequences for it. Work for you, Sargon. More food supplies. Very well. We will instruct our men to gather more food.
Oops. Just gotta destroy that one dot there. We have gathered more resources for you, Sargo. Okay, so now we're just gold the gold. You need gold. We are sorry, but there are no nearby oh. mines to exploit, so we cannot. Okay, and uh, I need food. Sound the food. You need more food supplies. Very well. We will instruct our men to gather more food. Grab on the freaking traitor.
pirates will no longer find safe haven in this dock. We have gathered more resources for you, Sargon. Another Elamite dog goes up in flames. I've gathered more resources for you, Sargon. Okay, we'll just put out one more. Oh, can we not trade with them? It's not. Maybe that one. Good thing I didn't try and build any more. Pirate ships will no longer find safe haven in this dock. Praise the gods for sending a Zargon to deal with the pirate scum terrorizing our shores. May I offer you these catapult trivies? Expensive, but I built them with my own two hands, you know. Another Elamite dog goes up in flames. Alright, I was gonna just delete that one. The pirates of Elam have been driven from these waters. Now we can resume trade with the East and use its profits to support your campaign. Oh, great, Sarg. That was a 500. The boats are yours. Now, smoke out those Elamite ropes.
Okay, so I can just use these ships to kind of just start oh. sniping stuff, I guess. Oh man, left shoulder. So, so stiff. So I gotta go take a look at what's going on. Be back in just a bit.
Alright, sorry about that. Man, stiff. Speed up with conscription. We have gathered more resources for you, Sarva. Soldiers from Elam are plundering our lands. Help us, Sargon. All the way up to <laughs> it's like they skipped heavy. We have gathered more resources for you, sir. Somebody passed the word. Your forces need more lumber. All right. Our workers will now clear more trees.
Soldiers from El Amr plundering our lands. Help us, Sargon. These villages will work for you, Sargon. We have gathered more resources. to engage oh. first. gathered more resources for you, sir. Turret archers aren't helping nearly as much, but it's fine. Broken? Ibotare. <laughs> to do anything. Uh. Rogan? Ombus. Help! Elamite soldiers are in our city!
through this. Rogan? Alamos. Keep on cutting. Okama? Um, Zonas. Because we're not being that efficient anyway. Now we'll just go ahead and get that tech, guys. Gathered more resources for you. Bombus, 
dumbest. Keep looking for upgrades. <laughs> There's nothing to do but to destroy our enemies.
Sarai, Sarai. Umbis. Rogan? Thomas. Rogan? Yuri? Umbis. Rogan. We have gathered more resources for you, Sarai. Victory is ours. Can a mortal being of flesh and blood become a god? I asked myself this question more and more often as we embarked on a brutal campaign of conquest through lands so distant that I would never have imagined visiting them. The divine will, which Sargon once received and taught his followers, was now indistinguishable from his own. He made it abundantly clear that his will was to enlarge his empire, whatever the cost. I was not the only one who noticed our king's change of character. Discontent brewed among the population. Many of the soldiers, tired and spent from constant campaigns, harbored thoughts of treason. Sargon did not seem to notice his people's growing distrust. Caught up in his own world, where friend and foe alike gave way to him, he was already planning his next conquest. A campaign that would lead us even deeper into darkness. So one final push, I suppose. That or related against his uh, downfall. One of the two. Blood, sweat, tears, and the stench of burning bodies accompanied us on our way east. And it was not long before my fears came true. Barely had we crossed into the kingdom of Subartu when our people took up arms in rebellion. After years of grandiose campaigns, they were sick of the exorbitant taxes that Sargon levied to fund his wars. When I shared the bad news with Sargon, I hoped that he would see reason and accept that he had taken things too far. But the hateful glare in his eyes suggested the opposite. So, are we leading the rebellion? Wait for instructions. <laughs> Wait for instructions. Sargon can support a population of 100. You do not have a com to completely destroy your enemies. Focus on taking and holding megalithic structures, ruins instead. Ruins conquered by allied factions count as yours. Sumerian rebels, dissatisfied with Sargon's rule, have captured some settlements and should be dealt with. The Hurrians are less than enthusiastic about providing military aid to the Akkadians. Time will tell how trustworthy they are. Sargon has assembled a large army for the invasion of Subatu. This time, he has numerous villagers and enough resources to start building a camp. Subartu lies to the east and is defended by archers, cavalry, and towers. The Hurrians form formerly only contributed financially to Sargon's campaign but have now been conscripted into military service. They will primarily deploy catapults, camel riders, and chariots. Sumerian rebels, in the yellow, have occupied several villages in the gray that had once sworn loyalty to Sargon. The rebel forces consist of swordsmen, chariot archers, and ballistas. If the Akkadians manage to retake the aforementioned villages, they will pass to Sumerian uh, allies who support Argon's cause. 
Rumor has it that the Sutian desert nomads roam the northeast. Perhaps Sargon can ally himself with these order, or these hordes of horse archers. Okay. Several factions. So you got to take out red for sure. Uh, blue is with us. Uh, it's green. Let's see. Green is the nomads. Orange will be the allies. Yellow need to be dealt with. And gray is just kind of there. A new era dawns. Conquer the monuments of the past and carve my name on them. The name of your god, Sargon. Sargon. We will follow you, your majesty, uh, your divinity. We have captured a monolith. Captured a monolith. Okay, so we no longer have Sargon. that guy to uh Soldiers from our very own ranks are revolting and have taken control of some villages. Hilare.
We might actually try and go for Centurions on this one, but we'll see. I don't know how much gold there really is on the map. Captured a monolith. cause us any difficulties and will stand by our side faithfully again enough of this megalomania we will no longer accept your self deification sargon as you bring great misfortune upon us ah, ah. you little profane fools soldiers slay the wicked hurrians who dare to sully the name of their god okay so literally everything's just gonna fall apart for us got it well, at least I got the rune that was way up there. Lost control of some of the monoliths. This is gonna be super annoying. <laughs> have lost control of some of the monoliths. Oh, Sargon. We have been wandering the desert for weeks and have run out of food and water. Feed us and we will make you our lord. Okay, we just need to send them 600. Hmm, I can't do that quite yet. Oh, 
gotta be annoying like that. It's almost like you could just run right through and get all the runes if you really wanted to. We will never forget your mercy, Sargon. Anyone who besmirches your name will be held accountable by us. Nice. Just enough to get to the uh, upgrade. Okay, so we're gonna claim this real quick. I don't want to go claim that and liberate this village along with all the rest if we can. This small force might need some We have captured though. a monolith. We have captured a monolith. We have lost control of some of the monoliths. village is ours again. In gratitude, its residents kneel in the dust to pay homage to Sargon. Mm. And keep 
keeps trying to fall asleep. Farmers out. So that's gonna take a while. Otherwise, we have lost Force. control of some of the monoliths. And then we'll go and get the academy, just so we can actually move fast enough to make a difference. Lost control of some of the monoliths. cause us any difficulties and will stand by our side faithfully again. is ours again. 
In gratitude, its residents kneel in the dust to pay homage to Sargon. We have captured a monolith. Scum are defeated. Their unwillingness to accept their fate is <laughs> And then we could probably defeat them. It's not really necessary, but I could have to one other ones. Just give up. I guess they just conceded. 
Weird. The objective was to walk across all the ruins. Which Can I a mortal didn't do. being of flesh and blood become a god? The answer is no. No matter how much power a man attains, anyone who towers too far above others is doomed to fall in the end. Sargon was the king of kings, the most powerful man that had ever walked the earth. His empire, the first that mankind had ever seen. In the temples, Sargon had replaced the statues of the gods with statues of himself. And now, truly believed that he was divine. Yet I had seen him bleed. I sought him out after the sack of Subartu, only to find him standing atop a mountain of gold and corpses, precious stones passing through his fingers. He did not listen when I told him that this madness had to end. Once, I left my sword in its scabbard to spare the man who would be my king. But things were different this time. This was no man standing in front of me. No deity. It was an evil demon from the underworld, striding the earth to claim the souls of the innocent. I then remembered the prophetic words. The blood of the innocent will be paid for by the blood of the one. I plunged my blade deep into Sargon's chest. As he stared at me with wide eyes, a strange, wicked smile appeared on his face. Even in the face of death, Sargon never ceased believing in his own immortality. I have no such delusions. As old age withers my once supple frame, I welcome the journey to the afterlife, satisfied that no more innocent blood will be spilled in the name of this false god. Yet, I fear Sargon's legacy. The vices of power and a desire for divinity can inspire grim changes in even the most noble of men. I can only pray that for every haughty Sargon, there will be a humble Ushar, guided not by delusions of grandeur, but by a simple conscience of what is right and what is wrong. <clears throat> I forget, is Ushar the guy that we first killed? Maybe, I can't remember. And with that, he died. <laughs> that takes care of all three of the new campaigns. And we only have like these four to choose from if we want to do the other ones, but we're not going to. Um, let's see. Where we're sitting at on time. 125. Hmm. That's just a little under four. <laughs> Alright. Well, in part, part of it would that might decide it is who do I have left that I need to uh, get a victory with this might take a moment is there are still I only have like 76 achievements out of like 255 so let's see Palmyrin Minoan Hittite, Syrian, Carthaginian, Uh, 
I guess that's it. So, Carthage, Anoan, Assyrian, Hittite, and Palmyran. So let's see, Palmyrin. Villagers will cost 75 food, but have armor and work 25% faster. We start the game with an extra 75 food. Uh, camel riders move 25% faster. Tributes are not taxed, and trade units return with 20% more gold. Technologies research 30% faster. So, barracks, infantry, uh, kind of lackluster. Not complete trash, though. Pretty decent archers. I get Scythian chariots and heavy cavalry, but no cataphrats. We do get armored elephants, and we only get phalanx. Having said that, we do not get max uh, attack. We do not get max melee attack. Uh, what have we got for siege? We got heavy catapults and ballista. We do get almost full armor except for tower shields. Full towers. And our archers are also kind of subpar because we don't get the... Uh, Plus two, or I'm sorry, the plus one to missile range. This also, I think, affects uh, damage output. It might just be missile range. But we do get Ballista and Alchemy. I should tell you, like, how much it affects it, but it won't. Priests aren't super great either. Mm. So I guess we would have to go heavy horse archer. I don't know, maybe ballista and a few catapults here and there. I guess that's just what we'd have to do. And then maybe make... I don't know. But 20 to 40 armored elephants. To uh, snipe the town centers. That's kind of what I'm seeing. There's not really too much point in going for... any of the uh, armors for infantry so we would go for chainmail uh, archer calf and we get the metal working for the extra little damage output and that's about it This will either go really good or really bad. There is land nomad. Uh, was there another type of nomad? Can't remember. It's twin settlements, I suppose. Nomad and then land nomad. Okay.
All right, let's give it a shot. Yuri? Alamas. 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 Pilare? Alamas. Pilare? Alamas. 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 Pilare? Alamas. Rogue? Alamas. Alamas. Okay, so I gotta find berries. Alamas. Alamas. With wood. Pilare? Alamas. Alamas. Yes, that's uh, what we're going for. Bombus. Somus. Parai. Alamas. Bombus. Zelkanta. Parai. Alamas. 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 Bombus. On this. Guys on wood. I'll bust on food, I suppose, at some point. Alamas, Alamas, Bombis, 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 Alamas. Now the good news is that they do work faster and we do get a bit of armor. So we get an early rush on us. And it's just like Axemen or something like that, or preferably Clubmen. Uh, we, we'll probably win that. We get enough out. That I eat? Okay, so there was. Bombus, Ibo Tade. Got kind of lucky though. We got two people in corners. Alamas, 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 Alamas. Be looking for like another Alamas set of berry bushes or something. Alamas, Alamas. Elephants would also be nice. Alamas. 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 Pilare. Bombus. Two required buildings. It's gotta get our food production super high. Get to 500 quickly. And we'll probably be pretty well set.
Humbus. 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 Ibortare. Another person on wood. Surrounding, but just the one. Alama, damn. Alama, Isa. Alama, 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 Alama. Elare, Isa. Alama, Alama, Isa. Take advantage of that. Yuri, Isa. Zokan Ta. Uh. -uh. Uh oh. I know where we are. The only goodness is that looks like they're at the bottom of the pack for now. Rogan? Rogan? On this evil party. Doing that so we can just set up and maybe they start pumping out uh, archers and some cav, specifically scouts, so we can find out where yellow is and take them out early if we can. around us.
Hombre. Unfortunately, we found him fast enough, but it kind of sucks. People are already starting to get to bronze, and I'm still lingering in tool. We'll probably go back to our tool. Yuri? Bombis. 
Humbus, Humbus, Ibortade. Rosen? Humbus. Maybe this wasn't a good spot. Okay. 
I do need the uh, shield upgrade. Broken? On this. On this. Daddy. 
Hilare. Evil Potter. Humbus. Evil Potter. I certainly feel like I'm in a better position now. Uh, I'll get that as a backup. I could probably spawn out a bunch for like distraction or something.
balls to put this really stupid happens. Well, I guess he's no longer a problem for me. I just gotta be concerned about whoever took him out. Rogan? Which, speaking of. Bombus, Ibotade. Chariot, real quick. That's what we have on hand. Figure out where the hell the last three are. No, there's gotta be one around that area. Umbus, 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 Did green green. Syria. Uh, they fire fast, that's gonna be a Open much more annoying. Bombus. Bombus. 
purple. Okay, so we have Chozon, which has both the Legion and Cataphrats, and a little bit of Archers, but not super much. Uh, Phoenicians, which is going to be predominantly uh, Elephants, more than likely. And... Syrians. Logan? Random orange, I guess. Alright, we need to get that. Definitely need to get that. Click on that. So used to uh, actually having uh, infantry to pump out. Oh, great. Let's kill it. <laughs> I saw a free kill. I had to take it. Super painful for them to go through. <sighs> Speaking of, Bombus. Broken? Bombus. Thomas. Thomas, Lare. Get a market still. Oklahoma, Logan, Bombus, Bombus. Mm. 
Okay, I need some health. Are you red up here? Oh. Worry about finding purple. That I eat? Bombus. 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 Eat me. Okay, so I can focus my forces on red, and I can simultaneously build for green, and we'll just go full freaking. Uh, uh oh, I know I spotted. Just to act as a uh, means to build defenses for base. It's big enough to make more stone. But it is standard, so we could technically go for wonder.
Bombes. Ebel da de. Parai. forces are attacking red <laughs> they had like very few here nice <sighs> I'm gonna go ahead and call it there we got two quick kills and then we got two late kills and I thought I had to do like a mid kill like just well, I'm still in bronze or whatever trying to get into iron but uh Orange got taken care of for me. And I'm not sure who took care of him. Probably Red. But, uh, that was nice. Certainly could have gone worse. I didn't realize I was, like, that close to everyone else. 
but there's no guarantee I would have been fine if I took the far right corner. I did manage to go for a long time without being noticed, though, so that was good. I even got a nice little base going, thanks to just one villager. <laughs> ah. Military, we got 366 kills. We did not do nearly as much, but we mostly focused on the main target. Uh, we only lost 203. Like, this one's just sad. They lost 51 to us. I only managed to kill two. And I think they were both bowmen. Two uh, horsemen, probably. This one's even worse. I got one kill before I died. I lost 54. <laughs> just a little bit more. We raised 263 building. Or, I'm sorry. We didn't. We only raised 43. Uh, and we managed to lose 13, which were almost all towers. I think. We lost, like what, one storage pit. A couple of towers. Oh, farms, right. I'm sorry, it's farms. It's, I forgot I put my stupid catapult into no attack stance. So, that's why I don't like catapults sometimes. Just too much uh, potential for collateral damage. We collected the most stone. Food collection, we weren't too far behind, we probably, well, I guess, a bit more. But we could have caught up if we really wanted to. Just focus on more villagers. These our guys work faster anyway. We weren't first to tool age, we weren't first to any age. Partly because we got stuck in fighting, but we had to. Runes captured, one, three, three. Don't really care about them. While we weren't the most powerful, we were the most strategic, so we got our wins. Like, it doesn't even show like a major battle, we only had a couple. One, two, three. Thought about going for a wonder just to force salt. Because I very much could have helped them. Because all they were running was what? Mostly uh, chariot archers, which seems to be the thing everyone tries to run for. Hey, we can. All I had to do is just build some more uh, archery ranges, and I could pump out even more. Pomerians, more of an economic sieve, with pretty solid uh, cavalry units, just not super great. They're not like the best at anything when it comes to the combat, I don't think. Still. Since I'm pretty much done, I just wanted to take a look because, uh, let's see, we had Manoans, who get decreased ship, uh, improved Bowman line, including the composite, gets a plus two in iron, they had a plus one in bronze, I think they were already in iron when we were fighting them, but mostly uh, naval get long swordsmen. Uh, they do get Centurion. And their Centurion's actually pretty decent because they get full upgrades. Cavalry lines, not great. Usable, but not super great. I mean, your best bet's just Camel Riders to counter other cavalry. That I see what we can do for the Minoans. We'll just run Composite Bowmen with the Centurions. Especially since we get this Ballistic and Alchemy, so they are pretty good. And the Priests, there's not really too much point in going for Priests other than Heals. Which we can do for our uh, defensive line. We do get like full woodworking too. So they get max range. But our towers are going to be pretty atrocious. They're just kind of there for extra firepower. So we'll probably do Minoans and next. Um, let's see, it was Minoans, Carthaginians, I remember, and maybe Assyria. 
Hittites too, right? Which is Archer Siege. All ar archers get a plus one to attack, so the archers are pretty good. Uh, we get full shield and everything, but we only get Phalanx. We do get Armored Elephant. The Phalanx isn't as bad as the other Sis, because at least you get Tower Shield. And we do get full up to Meta Augury, but uh... That's the other problem. They don't get for like any infantry lines, and our infantry kind of sucks anyway. So you can start running. Uh, I would probably go heavy horse archer at that point, or elephant. Weak versus priest, though. Slow versus or strong versus slow units at long range. Uh, let's see. It's eight. That's six. Composite is five. So, yeah, so we go from seven to eight. Hmm. So yeah, just spam horse archers. Uh, we do get full towers. And we can use phalanx, but there's not really too much point. We get astrology. Conversions and healing is 30% more effective. That's it. So not too much point in having priests. We're building a temple, really. Downside is we don't get urbanization. So that is going to be a lot more houses we're going to have to build. If we want to run max pop. So I'm going to need really good wood economy. And... Carthage starts the game with 50% of all resource or 50 of all resources. Academy units and elephants units get plus 25% hit points. Camel riders get 15%. Uh, fire galleys get a plus 25% attack. Transport ships move 25% faster. Doesn't really help us on any of this. Uh, nobility f is free, which affects uh, cavalry. I think camel and chariot, right? All horse units and camel riders, yeah. And then these two get buffs. But we don't get full attack. And we don't even get full defense. But we do get full missile defense. <sighs> and archers, uh, not super great. I mean, I guess just go horse archers with the centurions, maybe some ballista in there. If you have to go against other, like Macedon or Greece. And uh, move in with the armored elephants to get the, the snipe the kill. We do get ballistics and alchemy, so. Alright, so I kind of have a plan for those. I'll probably have to review just to be sure, because I'll probably forget. And unless I come up with something else, we might just do that. We might for sure do like three skirmishes with this, and then we might move on to something else. I don't know. I'm going to do some test recordings to make sure I get everything up and running for... Uh, I think I might go for Riddler 
2 campaign. Uh, we'll start off the base, which will be uh, Allied and Soviet, not necessarily in that particular order. And then we'll move on to Yuri's Revenge, and I guess maybe from there we might go on to Mental Omega. As I know Mental Omega works, I gotta play around and see if I can get it to run a bit more smoothly with OBS and all that. That's the thing is that some of the games I want to do, they run fine normally, but once OBS is up and running, uh, there's a bit of lag. Like Fallout 4 is normally perfectly fine for me, but I gotta change settings and stuff to make it more bearable on OBS. But now that I have potential to be able to go back to consoles and stuff, uh, more modern consoles anyway, I might uh, do some playthroughs on that, but with the fiasco of what happened when I was trying to do retro games, I don't know. Yes, I guess that might be the next thing I might try and do is save up to maybe get an upgrade to the uh, capture card. The one I have was used. It would only give me occasional problems, but that last one was uh, a bit annoying. I wouldn't say it's super bad, but certainly annoying. Never did that before. I had everything set up prior and then just did not hold, I guess. But I do kind of have a plan. And it looks like I missed a... Because I'm looking like at the very bottom, I missed at least one other achievement, which is destroy Ur's wonder before it's completed in the prophecy. But anyway... Somehow, I've managed to get 71 achievements out of like 171 of AoE 2 Definitive. Which I suppose isn't too far-fetched, but it's actually quite surprising how many achievements there really are. And most of them don't even look like they're like multiplayer stuff either, so... A few, but not too many. But maybe a handful in comparison. So, um... Very slight chance I might try and do an extra stream at some point. I don't know when, it kind of depends on how I feel. Uh, especially if I feel a bit achy from the weather. It's very wet, very slick right now where I'm at. A bit warmer, certainly not down to the sub-zero temps that we had before, which uh, was a bit annoying because it kept taking out internet intermittently and I don't think any real power outages or anything thankfully but I certainly did miss one string to it and if it got too cold I probably wouldn't I probably would have canceled stream anyway because I don't want to sit here and freeze when I can be under night underneath a nice warm blanket in bed but nonetheless so we should be moving on to Railroad next week for Fallout 4. And I'm going to try and get everything set up for Red Alert 2 here. And then, while well, it's not going to necessarily affect anything for stream, I'm going to try and get some sketches done. I'm going to attempt to do a freehand sketch of Trajan... Uh, Pyrus and Sargon. Sargon will certainly be the more distinctive of the three, I think. I gotta go and take a look at a picture of Pyrus again. And Trajan... Slightly different from Caesar, I suppose. I think it's mostly like the haircut with... The, maybe the distance of the eyes or something, but... They look kind of similar to me, anyway. But that's enough rambling for now. So stay healthy, stay frosty. Until next time. See ya.